Hello and welcome back to the Traction Channel. We like racing. I figured I'd keep you in the loop as that's probably news to you. And if you do like racing as well, then why not hit the subscribe button, ring the bell to get notifications. But this is the Next Level Racing GT Track Cockpit. And this is their freestanding single monitor stand. As you can see, we've had our hands on it and we're gonna guide you through the unboxing, the building and the playing with this thing. And here are our thoughts. So first up, these are the size of boxes these guys come in. No surprise really, the boxes are that kind of size, especially when you look at how big they are once they are built. So make sure you've got the space to actually build it. But what was the unboxing and building experience like? Everything was bubble wrapped and sealed, nicely packaged, so nothing was damaged. And overall, it was relatively straightforward. Overall, it took about two hours to build this entire thing, which actually was okay. Although the studio itself was really, really hot the day that I built that. That wasn't as nice. The instructions were clear and simple, perhaps too simple, as some of the diagrams somewhat made sense, but some didn't give me enough information. Do I need to put washers on both ends of the bolt as I put it through the framework? Which of the bolts actually needs a nut at the end? And when I've got spiked washers, whereabouts on the bolt does it go? What are the little plastic grommets for? What's all this? What's all that? There were a few things that made me go to the YouTube video that's been conveniently QR coded into the manual for actually specific information as to what to do. So the instructions themselves could have been a bit more detailed. Although, obviously, got there eventually. Another thing that didn't sit so well was the fact that all the bolts, washers, nuts, and tools came in a very organized blister pack. It all seems nice and organized at first, but A, blister packaging is literally the worst thing humanity has ever invented, and B, once you've opened it, it just ends up in a big pile, a big free-for-all of bolts and pieces and bits and bobs. If it all came in individual little plastic baggies, which admittedly the bolts for the monitor stand did, you'd be okay. And unlike blister packaging, which once it's opened, it's completely useless, little baggies can be used for something else in the future. If you like board games like me, they're perfect for your little trinkets and tokens and stuff that comes with board games. Baggies please, not blister packaging. That sucked. Finally, these components were incredibly grubby and slimy. Obviously fresh from the production line, my hands were pretty nasty by the end of it. After building I went to wash my hands and I was just pouring lots of grey water into the sink. That was gross. However, the final product is incredibly stable, well machined and incredibly comfortable to use. I could build all of this entirely by myself right up until the end when you need to put the casters on because you need to lift this thing up and obviously it can be quite heavy. And the casters are another thing. If you need to tuck this rig or the monitor stand away somewhere to free up some space, these wheels make it so much easier. They also lock so you're not rolling around while racing. Just don't throw yourself into the seat too heavily, as while they do have brakes to keep it in place, they are still made of plastic and they could break. However, you do get two spare wheels in the box, which is nice. Speaking of the chair, it is very comfortable for someone of my stature, but if you're a little bit larger, you might not find this seat all that comfortable as it is quite narrow. These side bits, they might dig into your back a bit. They fit me perfectly, but maybe not somebody a bit larger. And also, these seat belts, while looking very much the part, are looking very cool. I can click myself in here so I'm not gonna roll away. By itself, these are a bit useless, a bit frivolous, but they're not entirely useless if you choose to pair them with some accessories. That we'll get to. The seat is adjustable right out of the box, moving both forwards and backwards. And also, if you want to go all the way back here, God knows why, but you can. Oh, I'm gonna go for a nap now. Both the pedal and wheel mounts are adjustable for both height and tilt, as is the height of the monitor stand, and the plate intended for a handbrake or gear shifter can be mounted either side of the chair. However, the wheel plate, the pedals, the gear shifter, even the monitor stand, none of it is like a quick release system. It's all held in place by nuts and bolts. So if you want to move this around quite quickly, you're not going to get it done quite quickly. So if you've got a bunch of different people who want to use this thing, getting it all perfectly mapped to how people like it, not that easy with this rig. Both the wheel and pedal mounts are pre-drilled, ready for whatever brand of peripheral you want to use, including direct drive wheel bases. We've got some Thrustmaster stuff on here at the moment, and all of the screws for mounting all of this come in the box. Awesome. 
As said, we also do have the freestanding single monitor stand from Next Level Racing, which does exactly what it says on the tin. You can mount anything from a 100mm square Vaser monitor to a big old TV on here, and much like the rig itself, it is on casters, and it's perfectly whipped to just sort of straddle the front of the rig, making it all feel like it's just one product. But with the flexibility to easily mount the display by moving the rig out of the way, or switching things up by just pushing the rig up to your living room TV or your desk. And while there are no specific cable management channels or routing points on this rig, you do get a bunch of Velcro cable ties out of the box, which do perfectly fit around the diameter of these metal bars. And you only fit a couple of cables beneath them, they're not super long, and admittedly you're not really going to put loads and loads of cables beneath these, but if you do for some reason have some pretty chonky boys, you might not get very far with these ones, so you'll have to fish out your own cable ties. I'd assume you've got cable ties, who doesn't have cable ties? Anyway, let's play some games. Racing on this thing is incredibly comfortable. With the caster brakes on, nothing moves around. Not the rig itself, nor the mounting points for either your wheel or pedals. Though the chair does have a little bit of backwards flex, so if you get a hard brake, you might find yourself moving backwards a touch. It's not a massive deal breaker, and everyone in the traction office who's given this thing a go haven't had any major complaints. From Assetto Corsa to F1, this thing is really fun to use, and you've already seen it a few times on the channel. On both of my reviews for the Thrustmaster SF1000 wheel, which is actually right here in front of me right now, and the BenQ Mobius Ultra Wide Gaming Display, both of those reviews you can check out on the card in that top, all the way over there. I think I'm pointing to the right corner. Yeah. So, how much does this setup, minus the wheel, pedals, display, and PC, set you back? Now bear in mind these are not the same product or bundled together, these are two separate products. Now the GT Track cockpit comes in at £699, the freestanding single monitor stand comes in at £149. For its build quality, stability and manoeuvrability, the monitor stand is well worth the price. As for the rig itself, £699 is already a lot of money, and for what you get, it might be a bit steep. Although the ease of putting it together, the stability, the comfort, the compatibility, and how it looks compared to other rigs in its price point, it is a good cockpit to put your money on. And speaking of compatibility, there are a ton of accessories you can use to take this rig to the next level. There are options to transform this thing from being sim racing focused to a flight sim cockpit, and compatibility with Next Level Racing's Motion and Traction Plus platforms gives those aforementioned seatbelts much more purpose than what they have just on the rig by themselves. And though those motion simulator accessories are incredibly steep, they start at a good £2,500, this rig is step one. You could also opt to use their triple monitor stand with this instead of the single one if that's more your style, or as said you could just plonk it in front of your living room TV or in front of your desk if you don't have the budget or the space to accommodate something like this. But overall, is the GT Track cockpit and monitor stand worth the money? Honestly, yeah. Myself and the traction team have had an absolute blast using this over the last few weeks, and honestly every opportunity I've had to come into the studio and play more F1 for uh, research, I have absolutely taken. This thing is good looking, well built, and it's great to use. So much so that I am now debating how easy it'll be to get a rig past my partner to have in the house. Thanks Next Level Racing, it's going to be an uphill climb from here. And that is my review of the Next Level Racing GT Track Cockpit and the freestanding single monitor stand you can use with it. What did you think of all of this kit and this video? Let me know in the comments section down below. I hope you guys have been enjoying all these Harbour reviews. I know I've been absolutely loving getting to play with all this really cool stuff during work hours. It's the best thing. If you don't want to miss out on more stuff like this, then please do hit the subscribe button. Ring the bell if you want to be notified of all of our new videos. Thank you so much to Next Level Racing for sending this in for us to play with. I mean review. I mean, play with, absolutely. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep it pinned. I'll see you next time.